praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have breath in our lungs this morning. We are here to praise and to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve this morning. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve this morning. We come into your presence, Lord, to bring a sacrifice of praise. With thanksgiving in our hearts. Hallelujah. of praise into the hands of the
rich, so full, and so free, and of God's blessings manifold, of grace that faileth never, of peace that flows like a river, from God the glorious giver, to him give thanks. Hallelujah, we give you thanks this morning for all the things that you have done for us, Lord. We praise you for your holiness, for your wisdom, and for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your breath of life this morning. Hallelujah. I will praise him. I will praise him. I will praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Oh, give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away his stain. Hallelujah. it away this morning. 
Hallelujah. We praise and we magnify the name of Jesus. Amen. He is worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name. for being our safe place, God. We trust in you, and we thank you, God, that we were able to bring back into your storehouse a portion of our gift. And we thank you, God, for those who will be using it, oh God, that they will be using it for the furtherance of your kingdom, and they will use it with wisdom. We, we present the balance of this service, oh God, and we pray that your Holy Spirit will come and tabernacle with us in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? My 
Hallelujah. Amen. Your presence is heaven to me. At this time, we're going to have our seats as we prepare for the word of God. Let us put our hands together and welcome Brother Lenroy this morning as he comes to give you the word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. Such an honor to be here this morning. We are alive and we are well. And that in itself is enough to give God praise and thanks. A lot of persons didn't make it today. A lot of persons didn't make it this far. But we are here, despite whatever is happening around us, God is good, God is faithful, and God is true to his words. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Father, we thank you that the entrance of your word give it light. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are with us today. And we ask, Lord God, that you will take full control that you will give me the words to speak today in the mighty name of Jesus. The words that you want your people to hear. We pray, Heavenly Father, like my God, that self would be slain and everything will be focused on you, my God. Because, Lord God, Father, we understand that you are our God. You are our everlasting portion. God, you are everything to us. And so, Father, we come against every attack of the enemy. We pray that your word will go forth. And it would accomplish that which you set it forth to do. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. James 4.14, 4, if you have your Bibles with you. And immediately after that, we will go to Colossians 3.2. And I'll read, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. In Colossians 3 2, it says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when I think about the brevity of life, I get so confused. I get so overwhelmed. It is so much at times for me. And even while I was preparing this sermon, there were so many questions, so many things were flooding my mind that at times I had to say, Lord, take the wheel. Lord, take over. Because when I studied a text, I asked myself, Lord, what sometimes is the point that we are on this earth and we fight over things in this world? We fight to get to a certain part, to a certain stage, a certain level within our lives. And then there are times that at the moment we get there, problems sickness comes and then there is death when I was studying I had a friend and she she had plans she had goals and she had dreams that after she would have completed her education there's certain things that she wanted to do and that's quite natural we go, we, we attempt certain things, and of course, when we are finished, we would say to ourselves, well, I want to be there in this place. I want to go overseas. I want to work in this particular department. I want to work in this particular business. And she had her plans. She had her goals. And as soon as, well, a few months, after she completed her program of study, 
the doctor told her that she had cancer. A very aggressive form of cancer and she only had a few months to live. After working so hard, she had her plans for her daughter. Her daughter was just enrolled at the girls' high school. And she was told that she has a few months to live. And she took it on. And within a month or two, she was gone. Never to be seen again. And so when I think about all these things, and this is just one of many, and I'm sure that if we reflect, we would think of persons who would have worked hard to get out of the slums, to get to a certain stage in their lives, Tragedy strikes. Sickness. Death. And they are gone. And I say, God, what is the point? I would ask God these questions. Lord, what is the point? Sometimes we fight up. We try to better ourselves. And at the end of the day, Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised, and that is a fact. And then I asked the Lord, I said, at the end of the day, I die, and I'm in the ground, my body's in the ground, with the good and the wicked. And I still have to wait until you come. My God, how can that be fair? This is how I would reason with God from time to time. But I'm making a point and I'll get to the point. I said, God, come on. There has to be more. And I believe that is why the songwriter said, Father along, we'll understand it. Father along, we will understand it. And it means to me, therefore, and that's what it says in Colossians 3 and verse 2, where it says, set your affection on things above and not things on the earth. What we have here right now is temporary. So we have to have an eternal mindset. God, I thank you for what you are blessing me with. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my friends. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the education. I thank you for the car. I thank you, Lord God, for your many blessings. But Lord, this is not all. God, at the end of the day, at a twinkling of an eye, God, I could lose everything. We can be up today and down tomorrow. And that is why it is important for us to treat people with kindness and respect. At times, sometimes you would see people, they would look at people with disdain and scorn, like they are nobody. I don't want anything to do with you. Look at you. I have this. I have that. I have accomplished everything that I have to accomplish. I have all the money in the bank. I am a billionaire. I am a millionaire. I can go and pick up what I want. I could go to this auto dealer right now and tell them I want this fancy car. I want this Mercedes Benz. But life has a way of humbling us. 
and teaching us certain things that these things are only temporary. We can have them today and tomorrow we have nothing. Life is a vapor. Every minute we go on social media, it's that people are dying. The young, the old. When I was growing up, just old people were dying. And they were in the 80s and their 90s, they were dying. But now, the funeral home is a big business. They're making a lot of money because people are dying. Life is a vapor. We can be here today and gone tomorrow. So friends, we have to look above. We have to have an eternal mind. Think about it. In 150 years, how many of us will be here? In 150 years, I'll be 183 years old. But I could tell you I don't want to live that long. 183 years old. Huh. <laughs> so it's life we have to prioritize. We have to change our mindset and focus on things above. Because it is easy for us to get lost if we do not understand this principle. And hear me, whether you are good or whether you are bad, all of us have the same faith. It doesn't matter how many places you have donated to. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how kind you are. Death is an appointment. And we have to ensure that we make our calling and election show. If you don't believe me, I'll read this. I have the NLT version of this. In Ecclesiastes 9, 2, and 3. The same destiny ultimately awaits everyone, whether righteous or wicked, good or bad, ceremonially clean or unclean, religious or irreligious. Good people receive the same treatment as sinners, and people who make promises to God are treated like people who don't. It seems so wrong that everyone under the sun suffers the same fate. Already twisted by evil, people choose their own mad course, for they have no hope. There is nothing ahead but death anyway. That's the word of God. So like I said, we have to view this thing smartly. Although we have our questions, although we may say that life is unfair, yes, it is unfair. Life is unfair. Sometimes things happen to you and you don't do anybody anything. Nothing. And problems. Stress. Financial challenges, all sorts of things happening, all sorts of things going on in your life. Why? You didn't do anybody anything. I preached of someone, I believe it was last year or earlier this year, on Job. And the theme was, you are being considered. And if you look at the life of Job, Job did not do anything. He did what he was supposed to do, but trouble came. The left, the right, the north, and the south. So, whether we are good or whether we are bad, as the word of God states, same fate. So it means, therefore, that we have to look heavenward. We understand this principle, and we have to ask God to help us day by day, day by day, with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. We have to tell God, God, I need you to help me day by day. I do not have all the answers, but you have all the answers, and I'm calling upon you to help me. I'm calling upon you to strengthen me. I'm calling upon you to guide me, and God will do it. 
Sometimes it doesn't happen in a way that we want it to happen. But it happens how God wants it. Because what we are seeing here, God is already in the future. What we can't see, he sees. So he knows how to set things in order. He knows how to set things straight. That is the God that we serve. The ancients of days. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. That is the God that we serve. The same God who was with the Israelites who crossed the Red Sea. It is the same God we serve today. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Jesus. And so, because our lives are in Christ, who is seated in heaven, we must set our minds on and let our attitudes be determined by things above. We must view and evaluate everything from an eternal and heavenly perspective. Our goals, hear this, and pursuits should center in Christ Jesus, including resisting sin and being clothed with Christ's life and character. Spiritual graces, power, experiences, and blessings are all with Christ in heaven. He bestows these things on all who sincerely and diligently pursue him with all their hearts. So everything we do, I'm encouraging you to always put Christ at the center. Every single thing, every, every opportunity, whatever plans you have, always put Christ at the center. Lay him at the center of everything. When you have a good foundation, when you have a good solid foundation, you don't have to worry. The devil can huff and puff all he wants, but you don't have to worry because the devil knows that he is a defeated foe. He has already lost the battle. He is just waiting on time now. He's just waiting on time when God will deal with him forever. And then we will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And then there will be a new heaven and a new earth. No more crying. No more pain. No more sickness and no more death. Don't have to worry about these things anymore. But Christ Jesus said that he would do that. But we have our part to play. We have to do our part by living our life for him. Surrendering our lives to him. If we do not do our part, then it means that when he puts the devil away, some will go with him. Oh, what a day that would be. But the thing is, we have the time now to reconsider, to reflect, to change, and to surrender to the king of kings. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. I, I can't force anybody to do anything. People have a right they are free to believe and not to believe. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So ultimately, the choice is yours. It is up to you. If you are going to be, I should say we, if we are going to be focused or caught up with the things of this world and not focusing on what God is saying to us. Have an eternal mindset. Jesus. Jesus. And so there are a few things that I want us to understand. And I spoke of this earlier. Where it says that in understanding all of this, 
in understanding that life is short, life is a vapor, we must first have a kingdom mindset. Because when we have a kingdom mindset, we see the world through God's eyes and live in a way that honors him. In Matthew 6, verse 33, Jesus describes this perspective perfectly. And in so doing, we have to look out for others, particularly the less fortunate among us. I want to read this portion of scripture. It's from Luke 16, 19 to 31. I'll just... fine linen and fat sumptuously every day and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and see Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest thou also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto them, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And so, I am not in any way saying that it is not good to have material possessions it is good we can all agree that it's good to have somewhere comfortably to sleep to have money in the bank if you have to go to the doctor or if you or if you want a vacation somewhere it is good to have these things but we should not let them take us to hell. We must not allow these things to lead us to hell. We have to stay on the straight and narrow. And we have to help who we can help, by the way. You think sometimes because God is blessing us, it's for us to keep everything for ourselves? That's selfish. We are supposed to give. You know why? The Bible tells us that the poor we will have always. But we have people who can give. You do not have to be a millionaire, you know. The little that you have, you can give. Make someone's day. Make someone feel good. To feed somebody. Some people have nothing to eat. And sometimes we watch them and we see them. And we refuse to help and to comfort them. Don't put your confidence in these things. 
material wealth and all the things of this world because this world is passing away, it will fade. It's temporary. Don't brag and boast about tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised. Don't brag and boast and say that you have everything in the world because a time would come when Christ would say, your soul is required of thee. God have mercy upon us today. And as I was saying in the very beginning, when I was questioning God and asking God, Lord, what is happening? What is going on? I was led to this scripture. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord, with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. Trusting in the Lord with all our heart is the opposite of doubting God and his word. Such trust is fundamental to our relationship with God and is based on the premise that he is trustworthy. As God's children, we can be assured that our Heavenly Father loves us and would faithfully care for us, guide us rightly, give us grace, and keep his promises. In the most difficult times of our lives, we can commit our way to the Lord and trust him to walk on our behalf. Also, our own understanding is limited, fallible, and subject to error. We must therefore be enlightened by God's word and spirit to lean on our own understanding rather than to trust God according to his word and spirit. magnifies the human mind while it diminishes the human spirit. Dependence on human reason rather than trusting God leads to pride and spiritual leanness. Rather than being wise in our own eyes, we should demonstrate our trust in God by asking him continually for wisdom and knowledge of his will in all spheres of our lives. In all our plans, decisions, and activities, we should acknowledge God as Lord and his will as our supreme desire. Every day, we must live in a close, trusting relationship with God, always looking to him for direction by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. When we do this, God promises to direct our path. That is, he will lead us to his goal for our lives, removing all obstacles and enabling us to make the right choices. We can't do this on our own. We can't, walk, we can't, we can't take this walk on our own. We need God every step of the way. Every step of the way. Every step of the way. We need him. And also in times of uncertainty, we have to learn to surrender everything to God. Tell him what we need. Surrender everything to him. And leave it there. Trust that God will deal with it. You know, sometimes we would take this God, you deal with this. Then we come back here. I want the boy. I want the boy. Come back. Come back again. Come back here for this. And so. So, that is what happens sometimes. I mean, we are human beings. You know, we are human beings. And of course, when, when you are, you know, when you are a child coming up, four, five, six, you don't study about anything. You don't worry about bills. You just 
this childlike faith. And so we have to do that. Learn to put things at God's feet and leave it there. God, your word tells me in Matthew 6, 33, to seek you first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added on. Lord, your word tells me in James 4, 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. God, your word tells me, we just read in Proverbs. Trust you in my whole heart. And not to lean on my own understanding. And you promise to direct my Lord, you are not a God who would lie. Your word tells me that you have magnified your word above all of your name. Which means everything you do is around your word. You walk according to what you said. God, you are not a man that should lie. Your word tells me. God, I know that I am limited, but I need you. You are the all-powerful God. We have to make declarations. You are the all-powerful God. And I ask you, Heavenly Father, take control. Help me, guide me. I may not understand what you are doing at this time, at this very moment, but I trust that you have my best interest at heart. Do not let the things of this world, the stress and the problems of this world, force us to get involved in certain things that we should not do. Do not run to the devil for anything. As convincing as the devil may come, he will present something excellent to you. Like you're in a business meeting and he's bringing a proposal, an excellent proposal. When you read an excellent proposal, you'll be like, wow, woo. But we have to be wise and exercise wisdom which is the spiritual capacity to evaluate life and conduct from God's point of view. So you see here, the kingdom mindset. You have to have this kingdom mindset. The kingdom mentality, which means there has to be some sort of shift. And I say it from time to time, a paradigm shift. We have to change the way in which we view certain things. And connect, I'm closing soon. And connect with the right people. Because the people that we link up with have the potential to lead us astray. You know how many times I hear people say, no, I would change them. I would make a difference. There's a reason why the Bible tells us to come out and be separate. You love people. But you have to know, you have to know how to deal with things. You have to know how to deal with people lovingly. God will reward you. There are times that you may say, Lord, what is the purpose of me doing good? Why am I doing this? Why am I being good? And it seems like I am being left behind. All I could tell you is trust God. Amen. Surrender to God. God doesn't think or see things as we do. He sees things in a grander, larger. He knows. He, he, he sees things differently than we do. And again, lastly, I want to encourage everybody 
take everything step by step and day by day. Don't you just love that hymn? Day by day. No each passing moment. Strength I find to meet my trials. Yeah. And I love this part when it says, Help me, Lord. When toil jumbles into me. We can sing this hymn. Let us sing this hymn. I might need some help, Sister Chrislyn. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials. Yeah. Trust in it, my Father's wise bestowment. Have no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure, gave unto each day what he deems best. Loving me is part of pain and pleasure. shall be in measure this a pledge to me he made help me then in every tribulation so to trust your promises O oh Lord that I lose not faced with consolation offered me within your holy world help me lord when toys and troubles meet in entertain as from a father's hand one by one the days, the moments fleeting Till I reach the promised land Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we give you thanks. And we give you praise. Lord, Father, your word has gone forth. And, Father, I pray right now that we would all reflect on your word that we will reflect on our lives and to consider our souls because, Lord, life is a vapor. Father, I pray that you will protect us, that you will keep watch over us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, that you will help us and that you will strengthen us where we are weak, God. Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will cover our families. Cover our loved ones, Lord God. Cover our friends, my God. Lord God, I pray that you will draw us even closer to you, my God. Because tomorrow is not promised. Father, I pray right now. 
that you will protect us from every hindrance, every evil of fools, every plan of the enemy, every backlash of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We pray that the plans of the enemy will be scattered in Jesus' mighty name. We declare victory. We declare victory. We declare victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those who are not well. We pray that you will touch them. We pray that you will strengthen. We pray that you will heal them in the name of Jesus. Those who need healing and deliverance, Lord God, I pray that you will deliver, that you will grant it to them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Because you are healer. You are deliverer. Father, you are protector. So, Father, even now, we pray that you will just take over. That you will take full control. Oh, Lord God, that you will meet our every need in the name of Jesus. We declare victory of our circumstances. We declare it now. Help us not to, to lean on our own understanding, but help us to trust you in all circumstances, my God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout the name of Jesus. There is power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is a good God. 